this morning we bless your name we glorify you we join the two and four elders and the angels to cry holy this morning your name is the highest your name is the greatest all thrones and dominions lord all power and positions father your name trumps them your name stands above them all your name stands above sickness and disease your name stands above accusations. Your name stands against all the powers and all the wiles of the enemy. Your name, at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee on earth, under the earth, in the sea, wherever they are, will bow. Lord, we give you thanks that you have given us that name, that in that name we can function. In that name we can operate. In that name we have access. Father, we say thank you. Blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' mighty name we have given thanks. Come on, somebody give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. You, you may be seated. Hallelujah. Our God is good. Every time we have opportunity like this to praise God, thank you so much, choir. We need to appreciate God. You know, the devil wanted to try his chance with me this week. <laughs> um, made me feel a bit unwell. And so many things bega began to run through, run through my mind. <laughs> you know, I've never had that kind of thing before. I had a headache that was the whole day, persistent. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I, I can't remember the last time I went to a GP I had to go to the GP check. There was nothing wrong. Give me heavier painkillers, codeine, all sorts. And they still couldn't work. Um, so, thank God when you have a praying wife, amen, and a praying son. <laughs> so, they decided to anoint me and pray together. I slept well, and then on Friday, I started to throw up. 
I wasn't even sure whether I would make it to service today, but the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. So that's why when you see me giving God praise, I'm alive. And you know, so many things ran through my mind, sir. Because exactly about a year ago, I was on a trip, on a work trip to, 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 to some of the places we go to. One of them was Ghana. And I met a young lady who was our student. They, were, they came in for an alumni event. We all talked, chatted, happy. I did a video with them. And this week, I heard that she had passed at 33. I couldn't believe it. I played the video. I was looking at her. The lady got married in August. And by April, she was passed. So that's why the Bible says, let the living praise the Lord. So if you're living this morning, praise the Lord. That's why I like that song that says, I will not be silent. You know, I felt so sad. Young lady, full of life. There was nothing that would have suggested when I saw her last year this time that she would be no more. And I thought of my life. You know, we were at the youth's meeting last weekend. And there was a question, if you had 24 hours to live, what would you do? And some people had interesting things. Some people say, I'll make sure I get married. I'll make sure I do this. And I thought of it. And I said to them, I will make sure I get my life right with God. <laughs> because I don't want to miss heaven. I pray the Lord would help us. You know, when you have too many knowledge, sometimes you hear things, and when my head was banging, I said, what is this? Do I need to go for a head scan? Do I need to? I know all sorts just came into my mind. But I remembered, your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above them all. Because I was, I was so, I was so pain that night, and I was saying to my wife, she was like, "Should we go to A and E?" I said, "If we go, they will just waste our time for five hours. They won't still see anything. They will be trying to solve a spiritual problem with a physical means." So I tell her, "Don't bother." But I'm glad that I'm alive. Hallelujah. So this morning, it gives me great pleasure. I call him a father, a friend, a mentor. And um, he has been with us here. He's no, he's no stranger to us. Uh, but today, for the first time, he has brought his missus. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> to Edinburgh Tabernacle, they are, they are indeed supporters and great pillars in the Redeemed Christian Church of God in the UK. A woman herself that is passionate about prayer. So today I was saying I need to lay hands on the children and the teens because most of them will be going back to school today. So, mommy, you will do us that honors um, as the service comes to an end. We will bring them so that you pray for them. She, she's part of the Prayer Shield UK. So when the people who are shielding and making things work for us in the, in the inner courts of God. She's also a magistrate. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, God is our senior advocate, but he also has magistrates. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. In the spiritual and in the physical. Hallelujah. She's also what is called a legislative drafter. Don't ask me. You can ask Elder Pope after. <laughs> My learned colleague is there. <laughs> He'll be able to tell you what a legislative drafter is. But I would want to want us to, with Jesus, welcome just to appreciate our mommy in the house. Simi Adedeji, thank you so much, Ma, for coming. Um, she will bless us. She will bless our children. But with no further ado, let's bring our pastor, our reverend. We say the reverend with a swag. <laughs> I call him Revy. Let's make welcome Reverend Yemi Adedeji. Oh, believe 
lifted up above all the gods. So we lay our crown and worship you. We lift it up. Oh, we lift it Glorious God, all glorious God, we praise your name. We lay our crown and we worship and worship you. All glorious God. Let's lay our hands, let's stretch our hands towards Pastor and pray that his healing shall be complete in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to plead the blood of Jesus upon his life that that which my want to affect or attach itself to his body by the reason of the power that is above all names, the name of Jesus, we declare total, absolute healing over his body in the name of Jesus. From the crown of his head to the toes of his feet, every area of his body we command, we decree total and absolute healing in the name of Jesus. We use him as a point of contact for every single person in this church. If you are sick in any area, lay your hands in the area of your sickness. Let the healing power of God as a point of contact go through your body. Bring healing, complete, total healing. Today is a miracle service. May you receive your miracle even right now, right now, right now, right now. The miracle healing power of God in your life in the name of Jesus. That sickness will never return. That sickness is not your portion. Then. That sickness is not your hold. Then. We declare healing totally upon your life and every other person in this assembly in the name of Jesus. Then. Oh, we lay our hands to worship you. So oh, glorious God, we praise your name. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. It's not by accident that you call it a miracle service. It's because you want to do miracles, you want to do wonders. And so, Father, as we come before you this morning, we ask that you open our eyes and the eyes of our heart. That your word does not only bring an information, but we receive a revelation that will permanently transform and change our lives. This is what we pray for in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Come and give God a round of applause and grab a seat. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Such a delight to be with you and to be with pastor. And there is always a joy for me when my wife travels with me. It's not all the time. It's a treat. So I always love it when uh, a lordship travel with me. You know, you have to do your right thing so that you don't. When you travel with my car, in the, my wife in the car, you say, That's three points. You can go to jail for that. I said, But I'm still free. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. And then worship team, as usual, you did your thing. You know, and then you know, we are in sync today. We are the only proper Christians because we are wearing white. <laughs> 
And I want to commend the media team of this church. They are amazing. Anybody watch your church online? If you watch your church online and you are on socials like I am, you will know that this church is ahead. You are really doing great stuff. So let me commend the media team. They are doing a fantastic job. God bless you. God bless you. Today we want to, it's a miracle Sunday, as you have called it, and it's indeed a miracle day, and then we want to speak about the open door. You know, the biggest miracle for any open door is understanding your position in God and knowing the word of God. If somebody performs a miracle and you suddenly get ill and you don't understand the foundation of how you get healed, you can become sick again. But it is the foundation of knowing the word of God, what you stand upon, that will remain the permanent miracle that you are going to have in your life. Because the word of God is the miracle that gives you your identity. Most of the time, people don't know who their identity is. You know, I preached a sermon last week. It's called, What Next After Salvation? Because oftentimes people get saved and they get safe. So once you get saved and they say to you, start packing your bag and going to heaven. But you forget that you miss actually the miracle of salvation. The miracle of salvation is actually a function of being born into this fallen world. And then Jesus came to redeem us. Redemption. Like when he paid the, he paid the price for, he, he paid, you know when the kidnappers, he paid the ransom. So he paid the ransom, and then when he paid the ransom, he took us back onto the original creative order of God. And what was that creative order of God? It was before the fall. The way he created Adam and Eve. So he redeemed us back into the way Adam and Eve was. But then you ask, how was Adam and Eve? They were having a fellowship, communion with God all the time. So, in Genesis 1.28, God said to them, the first creative order of God, God says, be blessed. You are blessed to be fruitful and multiply. Now, God already blessed them to be fruitful. He's not asking for God's blessing. I don't know whether you get what I'm saying. When God created Adam and Eve, he said, be fruitful and multiply because, and replenish because they are what? Already blessed. So, for those who understand what next after salvation, you run back to your redemptive position and you begin to walk like somebody that's what? Already what? Blessed. Blessed to be fruitful. Blessed to multiply. Blessed to replenish. And because many people don't know that, you are waiting for me to lay hands on you to be blessed. Ah, you don't know your identity. And so, when people understand that, they are able to carry the weights of God's grace upon their lives. So when we talk about open doors, what, what, what then is open doors for? Because open doors are the opportunity that God will give to us to be able to do what he has asked us to do. Now listen, not all doors that open is from God. Some doors are opened. It's a trap. You know when you want to trap mouse? Once you enter that door, that door trap. And that's why some door open for some ladies. Oh my God, he's a great guy, tall, slim, handsome. Like me. But, you know, I'm, I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> but, but you don't know that that's a trap. So you have to know who is opening the door. Is it the Satan? Is it your own self-will? By wrong motive, or is it God? Because oftentimes, the door that opens, that God opens, might not look like the door that you want. So that's why every door that is open that you need to enter has to be by revelation. So revelation will tell you, this is God's door. This is not God's door. So you have to understand that. So, and you have to see. That, that's why the Bible makes us to understand that eh, the door that you open, no one shall shut. And the one that is closed, no one can shut it either. So we see it in the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 22 verse 22. God was speaking to a guy called El El Eliakim. And Eliakim have just taken over. Became the prime minister. And the weights of authority was placed upon him. 
And he was like, he was given an authority which is called the door, the, 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 the key of the house of David. As Isaiah 22, verse 22, he said, the key of the house of David, I will lay on his shoulder. So he shall, so shall open and no one shall shut. And he shall shut and no one can what? Open. So what was placed upon him was the key. The key that was given to him is the key to open and is the key to the house of David. Where is the house of David? House of David has a lineage that sits with Christ. So the authority in which he is able to close and to shut is what comes in from the house of David. Which is lineage, which is Christ, which is what is on the shoulder that we carry. So that's what I'm saying to you. Your authority to open a door and close a door is not by what you think. It's not by what somebody else thinks. It's about what God thinks and the what he has placed upon you. So that's why you can declare, I close this door. Nobody can close it. Nobody can open it. I open this one and that's it. It remains open. That is the authority that is laid upon us. Because Eliakim, as he, has, as he came to power, all authority was placed upon him as he stood in the place of a prime minister for King Hezekiah in Judah. And able to control, say, this door, from today, this thing is not happening again. They say, yes, from today, this thing is happening again. Yes, it's happening. Because he's able to close and, and open any door as he wishes. Because he carries the key to the, to, he carries the key of David, which gives him the authority to be able to do that. And that same authority, God has given it to every one of us. Because he doesn't come out of his own will. He comes out of his understanding and revelation that is God that gives you the power to say this door open and it will open. And if you go to the New Testament, Jesus himself talking to the church in Revelation. Revelation 3 verse 8, he said, I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it, for you have a little strength. I've kept my word and I've not denied my time. So, Jesus was telling the church in there that in, indeed you too carry the key to what? The key to the king of David. That on your shoulder, on his shoulder, Jesus Christ, is that authority, even as a church, you can declare to this city, this door be open in this city will be open. This door be shut in this city will be shut. You know, because why? What you carry is the image, is the identity, is the power, is the authority that is in Jesus Christ. Because he was speaking to church in this context. In the book of Isaiah, he was speaking to an individual. So both an individual and the church has the power to enter into an open door. Am I making sense to you? You know, a guy called Richard Baxter, when I was doing theology, he entered a city called Kidamista in Birmingham. And the Bible, and the history says when he got to that city, only one family knows the Lord. And he took the key that there must be an open door in this city. Fifteen years later, when he left the city, only one family didn't know the Lord. Oh, you don't get what I'm saying. He took authority that I have the keys. And doors must open. Only one family knew the Lord. By the time he left, only one family didn't know the Lord. Because he took domain and authority. You can do the same even for your own personal life. For everything that God has given you. Because if the foundation and the root, wait. If the foundation is not that the devil is the one that is opening the door that is a trap. Or you are going to enter a door that is out of your own self-will that you know you don't have peace about, then you be rest assured, if it is founded on God, when you say door be open, that door will be open. Listen. We must always ask the question, why exactly do God want doors to be open? Why? Because there's always a tension between the gatekeeper or the doorkeeper and the key holder. And the doorkeeper and the key holder is Christ himself. You know, when you go to places, if you don't know the doorkeeper, you know the right door to open. And you don't have the right key, you know the right key to open the door. So it's important to know what? The doorkeeper and what? And the key holder. 
And the doorkeeper and the key holder has been given to us in the person of Christ and Holy Spirit. That if we tap into him, he can open the door for us. And it's an unusual way sometimes when we do things. See, I tell you my own personal story. Many years ago, I was working for one of the largest retail stores in the country as a commercial manager. And life could not have been better. Great salary, good car, good life. When they say, praise the Lord, I will say this is Lord being praised through me. You know, you, know, you get to that kind of a place. Nothing, freak, nothing freaks you. They say, uh, give money in church. You say, is that all? You, 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 you are meeting. Serious like Babola, you know. <laughs> you are really minting. And I was driving to work one day. I know exact spot. And the Lord asked me this question. Why do you think you are in this country? And I thought, you know, you, you answer back to be blessed and be a blessing. Or, you know, you cannot find a Christian way. You're having a conversation with God. And I felt the Lord said to me, leave that job and come and work for me. I'm like, what, what, what does that look like? He said, because <laughs> it's true. When God said, come and work for me, what does it look like? And he said, I want you to be a missionary. Missionary? Who is a missionary? The Bible says, once have I spoken? The rest is echo. Because he only speaks once. And then my journey starts. The journey of, you know, you are only successful and doing well because there is a grace. When you remove the grace, what seems to be easy starts to be difficult. What seems to be convenient starts to be hard. And I began to struggle. Leave the job to do what? And the challenge came. I remember taking time to pray. It wasn't, I didn't say I, didn't say I had God and I said God immediately. No, no, I fought. And as I was praying, I was saying, you know, I wasn't praying. I was praying for God to change his mind. Because I'm saying, God, that door you want to close, don't close it all. And the one you want to open doesn't look like me. That's why I'm saying that it's God that will open the door. And what he opens might not be what you want and what it looks like. For three months. And then the time came when I finally settled. I was going to leave. So I went to tell them I work, I'm leaving. And then he started to ask me the question. Why do you really want to leave? I said, I don't know. Where are you going? I don't know. What is the problem? I don't know. Truly, I don't know because you want to go and tell them because God spoke. I don't know. So they got these uh, uh, occupational health, what do they call them? Yeah. So every Wednesday, they would take me to Starbucks. So I would sit down, then they would open their book and say, uh, hey, what did you say? Well, why did you want to leave? What is that the problem? I said, do I look abnormal? I am normal. But, but they said, who leaves this kind of a job and everything and go? I said, I just don't know. But I'm okay. So after some time, they reported back, he's not sick. He's just, he just wants to go. And I left. Then when you now leave, you now, you now looks like, a, okay, where do I go? Because God doesn't answer. Almost, God is not like a, I ask you a question, I ask you, and immediately it gives you the answer. Then, I, I, then you have to go through a time of what? Waiting. So what do I do, Lord? What is the meaning of all of these things? Which door is, is going to open for me? And that's why if you're not careful, you can make a mistake. Man of God, I got another job. <laughs> Plan for another job. You know, Pentecostal, they will tell you it's a world of double-double. Is that not so? When, well, well, whatever I, that, so I got another job, another retail company. Maybe better salary. And the day I was going to get that, I was going to sign the document to get that job, I felt a hit from the back, from the, from, from, you know when you are going to do something and God is saying I'm not there, when you've lost your peace. And in, the job looks good, better, but it doesn't look good in the realm of the spirit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It was a door that looks open. But it was a trap. So not all door that is open is from God. 
But God helped me. He helped me because I made a decision. And I quit. I didn't even start. It was on the day in the place that I quit. They didn't know what I left. I remember sitting in my car and crying. And I, I then said to God, God, whatever you want me to do now, I will do. Whatever, if you would like me to sweep the floor, I will just do it for you. Because if God removes his peace, you are rubbish. Nothing can compare to the peace of God that you carry with you. And to cut the long story short, God asked me to begin to serve with this Anglican Church Mission Society. They call them CMS, you know? CMS in Nigeria. So the Angl God, God asked me to go. That, that's another story. How I, got, how, how, I, how I joined them. And I got to the place. The salary was one third of what I was earning. The people don't look like me. They don't smell like me. They, they have not, we have nothing in common. But God said, that is the door that I've opened. Am I making sense to somebody? That is the door that I've opened. I, I, I struggled, but yet I had peace. Because what's important most is the peace of God. In this other one, when you go, you go with all the razzmatazz. Go, I, I got there. God say, strip yourself. It's called derobe yourself. A re robe in a different dimension. And I was there. I will be going to a conference. In the, <laughs> they, I will go there. They will say, Where, did you bring your tent? I said, tent. I'm an, you know, it wasn't like life was, it was the way you're a missionary, you're a missionary. I'm not talking about any other country in this country. Travel all over the place. All sorts of things. Thank God for my wife. She did some before she retired. That She, she wasn't the one called. I was the one. <laughs> and, and that was it. But I didn't know that God was planning something. Several years I was there. And after several years, that was then, that, remember this. Your purpose is bigger than your assignment. Because oftentimes you think it's the assignment, but the purpose is bigger than the assignment. I didn't know that God was setting me up to understand how the established institution in this country work, think, so that I can become a bridge that link it to the migrant churches that come from abroad. Am I making sense to you? Yes, sir. So it wasn't long when God now opened a bigger door. And suddenly I realized I became the director of Evangelical Alliance One People Commission that has almost 35, 35 establishment churches and nationalities. And I didn't even apply for the job. They just said, Yemi, you are the one that fills the job. I became the global ambassador for compassion for in over 24 countries traveling all over the place. I didn't ask for it. It came to me. Listen, that's why I say your assignment is nothing as compared to your purpose. You keep your eyes on the purpose. The assignment doesn't look like whether it is big or small. Just pay attention. God, where are you taking me? Because that's why you have to pay attention to the door that he opens and the door that he closes. So the question then is, why exactly will God open the door for you? Number one, God will open the door for new opportunities. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 9. He said, for a great and effective door has opened to me and there are many adversaries. God will open a door for you so that you are able to take the opportunity of the door. And it could be many things. God might open the door for you in ministry. God will open the door for you in, in your family, in work, in business, and in enterprise. He said he's the one. A great and effective door has been opened. You will know when God is the one that opened a great and effective door. Because you'll be able to function in what he has given unto you. Then you have to ask yourself the question, what door is, has God opened to me that I've not taken advantage of? Because oftentimes we'll be praying, God, open the door, open the door. God said, the one I opened, did you enter? Am I making sense? You might be saying, but God, that's not the kind of door that I want. God said, the one that I opened, have you explored it? And God, it might be little things that God is asking you to do. So God, God can even ask you to say, from today on, the door I open for you, start interceding for vulnerable children all over the world. But you're saying to yourself, but I don't have any vulnerable children. God said, that's the door I open. Just start praying for the vulnerable children. God might open the door for you because don't forget the purpose. Assignment is just what he asks you to do. Everything is aligned to purpose. God might say to you, find five people and start sowing 50 pounds to them. 
He said, but I pay my tithe. God said, you don't understand. It's about purpose. I'm taking you somewhere. Am I making sense to you? So that's why if you carry that key of David on your shoulder, in terms of what God is doing, you'll be able to hear him and know why did you really open the door? He just oh, doesn't open the door so that we can flinch. Every door open is for his, the king and what? His kingdom is for his purpose. Number two, God opened the door for the preaching of the gospel. Colossians chapter 4 verse 3. Apostle Paul was writing. He was in chain, in prison, in Rome. And he was writing to the church in Colossae. And he says that men were praying also for us. This is a man in prison that is saying pray for me. That God will do what? Open to us a door. For the world to speak the mystery of Christ for which I'm also in chain. The reason why God will open the door most of the time is for us to be able to what? Speak the mysteries of God. To be able to speak about him. My number one call in life is an evangelist. This preaching is great, but really, you put me around people. In fact, I'm not good in preaching. I'm not really good in winning to the Lord, my black people. Or my, you know, because everybody is no God. It depends on which God. Are you with me? You've never seen a black man that doesn't know God. Is there that one God that is pouring libation to, or one God that is what every black man knows has one God, right? If he doesn't have God, he himself is God. But there are many that doesn't have a clue about God. I found it easy to, to preach to the white people. Oh, too easy. Because why? When you understand the language, the context, the story, the cultural context, it makes it easy to engage. Because it don't come from a place of condemnation. It comes from the place of love and inquisition. So when the Bible says that you pray that God should open the door, listen, I want to challenge every one of you in this church. If you dare pray this prayer, do you know God will make it happen for you? Try it this week, every morning, before you go to work. Pray, God, please open the door for me so that I may be able to speak your mysteries, your gospel to somebody, and watch it happen. Most of the time when I'm traveling, or one way or the other, I always pray this prayer. I will say, most of the time, 70%, God will bring it to pass. It's an intentional, deliberate prayer. God, as I'm going today, please open the door so that I may be able to preach to someone. It might be restaurant. The, sub, the waiter comes and serves you and you kind of whisper to the waiter, is there anything that you'd like me to pray for you for? I mean, I'm a pastor or whatever. You see, most of the time, everybody wants to be prayed for, even the ungodly. And it's what amazes you he might go, come back and say, do you know what? I have a son or I have a mother. I have something like that. Can you pray for them? Always an opportunity. Mysteries. The mysteries of Christ. I could tell stories of stories. The one that amazed me that always, I pray that prayer that morning. God, please open the door today so I can preach your gospel. And I went to work. And I forgot. And I was coming back in the train in the evening. And the train was empty. No, you find one corner where you create your own tabernacle. Anybody been there before? You put your bag here so that you don't want anybody to see there. So you put your leg in the other one so that nobody sees there. Anybody done it there? You see them? You see them? They are all guilty. So nobody comes near that place. You, you kind of do that kind of thing. So it was empty train. And this lady of all empty seats in the train where I put one bag as a Elijah, one like Moses. <laughs> I want, and she asked me, can you move your bag and sit? <laughs> so I kind of look at her. They send you to me, but it won't happen. <laughs> I wanted to say, but there are other seats now. But she, but, but she just sat down there. You know, and I happened to have, my, I had my Bible with me. I said, I will, go, I will show this lady, Pepe, today. Not all, you know those Bible that uh, when you bring it, even the devil, devil will run away. You know those? 
So I brought the Bible and I put it on the, on, on the, on the table. So I just opened to somewhere, you know, trying to intimidate her. She just looked at me and said, what are you reading? <laughs> I said, this is really getting tough now. It's bad enough you came to my space. You are asking me, what am I reading? I didn't open the Bible for you to ask me what am I reading. I want to annoy you so that you can what? Move away. And then the Holy Spirit reminded me, but you asked me that I should open the door. But how I open the door is not up to you. I've just opened the door. She asked you what are you reading? Tell her. I was then reading John chapter 4, Woman by the Well. So I began to tell her that story and she was enjoying it, enjoying it. And then she said to me, do you mind if you pray for me? Ah, I knew that God sent her. And I led her to the Lord. And she thanked me, thanked me, thanked me, left. And I sat there, I'm thinking, and God said, when you pray, open the door. How I open the door is not up to you. That's why you open your heart. Once you pray that prayer, be alert. When God says, speak to somebody, don't be afraid. I was in the plane as well, pray the prayer, going to America. This man was sitting beside me. And God says, pray for, pray for him. I said, I know, no, God. Mm -mm, mm -mm. This man is an important man. You know when people look important. And of all places, going to America, this man can get me arrested. God, no, it's, it's okay, you know. Just, just let everybody mind their business. And, 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 and the man, do you, do you know, do you know when you dignify man, you know, we, we are sitting in that part of the plane, you understand that part, you know. So, I said, <laughs> I didn't say nothing. <laughs> so, he said, God said, pray for him. And I'm like, and the plane was about to land in Washington, D.C. So, I just brave up. I said, e -e 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 excuse me, sir. <laughs> then he looked at me. I said, do you mind if I pray for you? And he said to me, I've been wanting to ask you to pray for me, but I didn't know how. Oh, my God. I heard this God, Pastor, is something else. I held the hands of the man. I was praying for him. Next sitting to us was a pastor and his wife. They are couple. They noticed what was happening, that I was leading him to the Lord. And they stretched their hands towards us as I was leading this man to the Lord. And then by the time I, I finished praying, there were tears in their eyes, tears in my eyes, tears in that man's eyes. The air hostess came and said, is this a teary party? <laughs> <laughs> what am I saying to you? The reason why God will open the door is for be able to communicate his message. The mysteries of Christ. And the third reason why God will want is to deliver people from imprisonment. There are so much imprisonment of life. Locked opportunities. Cancelled by the society. Lack in all sorts. Chained. But God will want us. Part of the open door is to be able to pray into that and see that changes. In, gospel of, in, in the book of Acts chapter 16, 25 to 26, you see Paul and Silas as they put them in the prison. The Bible says, but at midnight Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison was shaking and immediately all the doors, they were open and everyone in change with the world, they were loosed. Imagine the level of imprisonment because oftentimes the reason why God will make us face what we are facing, go through what we are going through, is so that when he, when he visits us, he will open the door for many other people. You are possibly not going through what you are going through for your sake, but for the sake of so many other people. So if you, can, if you understand that what I'm going through is to open the door, not for me, for other people, it will make you pay attention that who is driving my bus. By one person that was set loose, that the door opened for, he opened the door for every other prisoners. Not only him, 
was released. Not only him was door open for, the door open for every other person. You know, it's like someone who is trapped in some bad marriage or bad relationship. And God opened the door for them to be free. Do you think God opened that door for you to be free alone? No. He saw that by God freeing you, you are able to use what he has engaged and embraced you to receive freedom to help other people. That's why you cannot be blessed and keep it to yourself. A testimony, no matter how challenging they are, is a liberty and freedom for other people. Pastor, that's why I never trust and follow any man of God that is not limping. If a man of God is straight and everything about him is right, perfect, no problem, no issue, no nothing, no, I don't trust you. But when you are limping, I got to ask you, why are you limping? Then you remind and tell me the story. How God delivered you. How God set you free. And that story become a testimony that can help other people. That's why Apostle Paul said, when I am weak, that's what? When I am what? Most strong. Because that's when the power of God is made available for me. Not in my strength. He said, I will not boast in my strength, but I will boast what? My weakness. Because our weakness is God's opportunity to witness the power of God. So that if everything is all complete, all kosher about you, then, then, then what, what testimony do you have? What do you have? Even our Lord Jesus went through what? Persecution. He has to die. He went through pain. So that by his death, it become a testimony that freed us. So how much more? Horse. And his death was an open door. His suffering was an open door. His persecution was an open door. So that we can be free. Same way. What is doing through your life? Because oftentimes when we come, testimony time, God has added more days to my life. See, there are difference between who are conquerors and those who are more than conquerors. If you testimony day, you come, oh God, I got a new job, I got a new wife, I got a new car, you're a conqueror. Ah, but I'm waiting for a brother that will come out or a sister. I'm still sick, but I want to give thanks. I'm still looking for a job. I want to give thanks. I have a case in court tomorrow, but I'm giving thanks. Those are the ones who are what? More than a conqueror. They are more than conquerors. Because they are still in their pain. But they can still say, the fruit for those who are giving thanks are not for all that things are going for. In this God that I trust, there's going to be an open door. I am not waiting for that door to be open. I am giving thanks, even in my pain and my weakness. What does that do? He helps other people to say, I got you. I am there too. I am there too. I am there too. I am there too. And you suddenly realize that the whole place is full. Not for those that want to testify they are conquerors, but those who want to testify that they are more than a That's when you are talking about open door. Because these are the reasons why God opened doors for us. Let me finish by quickly taking you through different types of doors that God might open. You know, the physical is almost, let us so understand what's happening in the spiritual realm. As, as pastor spoke to me that your theme is open door, then I begin to look at different type of door that you op often go through in life. You know some doors, you have to put key into it physically to open it. Some doors don't use key, it's revolving. Ah, it's timing. It's also spiritual. Ah. So some doors, they are not revolving. You just step there. What happened? <laughs> and everything has a spiritual implication. There are keys and there are doors. As we see in Isaiah 22, 22. It's physical. 
You have to struggle for it. You have to stand your ground. You have to use your gifts to unlock the door. It's like looking for a job. You have to apply for it. You have to go through the rig of the interview. You have to go through that to open that door. But you know, God is still in that business because he will still open that door for you. Having the keys of David, you are able to use the gift and the grace you have to do what God has. It opens the door. Different doors that God can open for us. But I love it when it's a revolving door. It does not require effort, but it operates on timing. It operates on timing. You've been to those doors before? Because, you know, as it goes, you have to wait to create that space before you go in. Which means your influence and gifts they are not what is needed, but it is the God that is creating the timing for that door to open. So it's a function of door that opens to you there's season, there's timing. There's season, there's timing. So when you miss the season and the timing, you have to wait. So the Bible said, like the sons of Issachar, is it? They understand what? The timing. So there are some doors that you know that this season. In this timing, in this moment, God is opening that door. And if you fail to enter that door, that time will pass. It's a revolving door. By the time it revolves and comes back to you, the other people, when it is their own time, they are in there. You have to go to the back and kill. So, for those who understand like the sons of Issachar, you know that in this particular time, this is the door that is open to me. I've got to get in. This is the thing that God is open to me. That's why it's by revelation. God, what door have you opened for me right now that I need to get in? Because you never miss that opportunity of what God is doing, of what God is saying. So you have to ask yourself the question, what door is God opening for me right now that I wasn't miss the timing of this door to get into this thing? A window of time. It could be a window of job or opportunity that then within this time we are creating this job opportunity. You can't miss it. In these windows of time, we are creating this thing. You can't miss it. Babes, you don't mind when I, if I, I, I use you. No, I've not used you to preach today, but let me use this one because I always get battered when I get back home. <laughs> so why should you use me to preach? Why? Especially if it is a wedding. <laughs> She got into a window of opening, like Uriah said, you know, she, she's, a, she's, a, she's, a, she's a magistrate. She, she often sits now at the uh, crown court with the high court judges. But being a judge for 15 years, a window of opportunity, opportunity now opened. And they wrote to her for this period, they are going to, what's the right word? A point or whatever, what, what's the right word? Or honor. Few judges to be given the key to the city of London. It's just a window. Now, if you miss that window, you miss the opportunity. Though being given the key to the city of London really means nothing. If it means nothing, why didn't they give it to me? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I use that to, to come out that when she wants to harass me, say, what does it mean? Be, because historically, what it means really that in the olden days, before you enter, the city of London is less than a square mile. Before you enter the city of London, you have to pay to get the freedom to enter. So when you get the uh, freedom to the city of London, that means you don't have to pay. You have to go in, go out. So, but now they now pick up. Uh, important people and then they give them globally, they give them like a, one big ceremony with certificate that now have the freedom to the city of London. It doesn't have, no, I'm in Nigeria. Where is the money? No money out of it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but it sounds good, yeah? <laughs> but what am I saying? There's a window of what? Opportunity. If she misses it, she has to queue for maybe another three, four, five years. So you have to understand what God's saying now. What opportunity has God opened for me that I have to take advantage of in ministry, in work, in relationship, in family? What is it? 
because it's revolving. It's time. You know, life is about time and season. Yes, sir. Wow. Man of God. <laughs> you know, it's possible that you're, you might be going through an harvest time, but your harvest season is not my harvest season. Your harvest season can be my sowing season. Yes, sir. So if I enter into the same season like you are, I will miss it. So God is saying there is no point for you to be harvesting. What you need to be doing now is what? Sowing. Because there is a sowing and there is an harvest. He has passed through his own sowing season. So he's harvesting. And so I have to understand that uh, as, as let him be buying a new car, new house, everything. God said, don't look at that. What you need to do is to what? So. Same thing is the season, day and night. Man of God, it's your daytime. You don't need to announce yourself, you'll be announced. Yes, sir. If it's your daytime, the platform, people will queue for it. They will put you there. But they will say, but he, he, he doesn't have what it takes to do this thing. But because it's your daytime, there's a light upon you. You are the most favor. You are the most light. It's got nothing to do with your ability. It's because there's a season yes, sir. that says it's your daytime. Yes, sir. So in your daytime, you shine. In your daytime, you are promoted. Yes. In your daytime, you are visible. Yes. In your daytime, you are known. Yes. In your daytime, everything happens for you. Now, you don't need to work for it, but because it's your daytime, it's just happening for you. That's why you cannot copy people who are going through their daytime. You have to know the season that you yourself, you are what? Going through. As it's a daytime for him, it might be a night time for somebody. Ah, and, and, and then during the night time, things don't seem to happen. All your effort feels like it's futile. You are the best, but you are the least called. You think I own that platform, but nobody is calling you. Those who are less than you are elevated, but you have nowhere to go. But if you are not careful, you think it's devil. But God say, as long as the earth remains, there will be day and there will be night. So, but if you don't understand how to engage the night time, you will lose it. Because God wants the night time is the time for you to don't talk to people. You and I. You and I. Because at the night time, God says, because at night time, what do you do? You sleep. You, God said, this is the time. Oh, during the daytime, you are too busy. Night time, I got your attention. I can talk to you. You can talk to me. If you don't prepare well in the night time, when the daytime comes, you will miss the opportunity. Never despise your night time because God is working also through your night time. You are saying to yourself, things are not happening for me. It looks like everything is dark, it's dull. Nobody's, no, 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 pay attention. You are going through a season. As long as there is night, day is coming. It's a function of how do you prepare your night so that when day comes, you can enter into it with full force. Ask any man of God when they go through their dead time. They will know that that's the time for the crucible. You find yourself in the crucible. God, what are you saying? What are you preparing? It's not my platform time. It's not my show time. It's not the time that I come out. It's the time when it is you and me. You need to give me the code. You need to give me what I need when it's the day time. You, you are just burying yourself there. But when the time comes, you will then understand that what you have learned during the time that you are in the cave becomes the quality and the value that you put in your day time. It's a revolving door. You have to know what season. And the last one, as I close, is the automatic door. Ah, I like automatic door. It requires no effort to open the key or to unlock. It's just a function of step in and the door opens. Once you step in, by its own volition, the door has to open. Have you ever been to those doors before? It's like the door is waiting for you to come, to open. So as you are strolling, as you, if I, Ari has one this weekend, as I was meditating about this sermon, so I would move near the door, it will open. I would say, stupid door. I would go in again. I would move back again, the door will open. I say, so this thing opened to itself. But that, that's it. When God sets you up for an automatic door, 
you, 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 it, 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 it needs to feel your vibration. Once it feels your vibration, the door has no choice. By his own volition, he will just open. Ah, he, by his just open because he just needs to feel you to step into it. And it will just open. It's called the automatic door. It does not require physical effort. It does not require timing. And you, the time is your time. Ah. Every time is your time. Willingly will open for you. There's something when door naturally opens for you. <laughs> In the book of Acts, chapter 12, verse 10, when Peter was in prison, pastor preached about it last week. I was listening to him. The Bible said when they were past the first and the second guard, you know, the kind of prison that they put Peter was what is called the king's prison. You know, maximum prison. There's a normal prison, there's a maximum prison. In that maximum prison, there are so many doors with securities that you can't get out of. And the Bible now says that, that they pass the first and the second guard post. Those guard posts, they are doors post with people in there. Then they came to the iron gates. Iron gates. Iron gates. It's not any other gate, iron gate that leads to the city which opened to them. By what? Automatic door. He opened by itself. Whatever that has been troubling you, whatever that has seized your life, whatever that has closed you in. Today, that is a miracle Sunday. I bring the prophetic word of God to you in the name that is above all names. I declare and I decree to you by its own will, that door that has shut you in is going to open. I say it's going to open. It's going to open the name of Jesus. Said. That door that has imprisoned you, that has not allowed you to have the freedom and the liberty to fulfill God's purpose by the reason of the anointing of the living God. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but if you believe it, you will come and testify. Today, that is a miracle Sunday. I am declaring to you by the word of the living God that that door will open. I said that door will open. By its own accord, it will open in the name of Jesus. Said. Whatever has trapped you and you are thinking I cannot, this is just too much. Because the door was, it was about to be executed the next day when the angel woke him up and said, come on, let's go. Some of you, you are in a place where you are down there. No hope, nothing again. But God says, wake up, wake up, wake up. We are going through the automatic gate. It's about to open for itself. Oh, man and woman of God, rise up from your casting down. God is about to do something for you. I say, as you enter this week, as you enter this week, not next month, not next year, this week, as you enter it, gates will automatically open for you in the name of Jesus. Iron gates will open. Whatever it has been put down, it will open in the name of Jesus. You will come and testify of door opening, door shattering opportunities that God will give to you in the name of Jesus. close I just want to say, give a testimony is that fine my junior sister was living with us I'm talking about automatic door and she was being with us for a while she was believing God for her husband all manner of doors of men but it didn't work. Some of them, they are like traps. Until one day, God led to my heart to tell her to return back to Nigeria. How do you go back to Nigeria when you have a good job and things are going well for you? She contested it. Over a time, she decided to go. Now, pastor, I took her to Heathrow Airport 
on December 24, Boxing Day. She traveled Virgin Atlantic at night to arrive in Nigeria 25th. She's been believing God for Oxfam for 10 years. A gentleman who goes to my sister's church, my sister just said, go and help me to pick her at the airport. And he picked her at the airport. Between the airport and the house, conversation started. And then the guy couldn't go back home. And then the following day, true story, the guy showed up on Christmas Day. I mean, sorry, on Boxing Day because he left here on 24th, she arrived on 25th. So on Boxing Day, the guy showed up in the morning to my parents' home. I didn't know where she got the ring on that day. I don't know where from Alaba market, whatever, she got a ring. But the only thing that he showed up and went to my mom and said, I would like to propose. He said, but what? You don't propose to somebody you just met yesterday. He said, I have come to the place where my sister, don't forget, was 39. The day when people are thinking that uh, it's past for you to get married. So they went to wake her up. The guy is there. He wants to propose to you. So he proposed to her. But the story was not much about her, but about me. Because she now rang me on that boxing day to say, bro, I got engaged. I said, you are mad. You are, you are so mad, it's unbelievable. I drop you day before yesterday. Yesterday passed. This morning, you are calling me that you are... So, you know, am I not right to say she must be... I, I, I said, did you see men walking like ghosts in Nigeria? You just pick one because you really want to say you are married. I said, you have lost your mind. He said, it cannot be true. So I called my senior brother. He said, it's true. That's a, I said, ah. I don't know which one was paining me. Whether the guy proposed or whether the guy beat my record. <laughs> <laughs> you get what I'm saying? You know, but I'm like, how, how did that happen? I didn't believe. You know, there are some things that God will do in your life, sir. The people that pray for that thing to happen, they will not even believe it. The Bible says, when the Lord turned the captivity of Zion, you said it last week. He said, there is a, there's a difference between when a dream is actually a reality. Yes. And you are thinking that the reality is a dream. <laughs> because for me, it was a dream. I said, it's, it's impossible. Then, seven days later, on New Year's Day, then she rang me. I said, before you talk, let me tell you, Lagos boy, he has dropped you. He, he has thrown you away because I know the way he rolls. He said, so I was throwing all the negativity until he said, he's, no, no. I said, so what is it? Then she said to me, they have fixed their wedding by the end of January. Who can beat that? I said, is that real? Is that yes? But then they have been married now with an 18-year-old daughter. And life has been going on. Now, that is one day revolving. That's not a physical. It's just that you just step into it and the door open. Who am I talking to? What you have been waiting for? For the last 10 years, it looks like it's impossible. It looks like there's no more hope. It looks like it's been shattered. You are about to step into it. You are about, but suddenly you are just about to step into it. And what looks impossible, God is bringing it. He's bringing it in. He's bringing it in. In the name of Jesus, you are going to step in. What, what looks like a miracle? Ah, God is saying your time has come. Your time has come. You are about to enter into it. In the name of Jesus. Step into it. Everybody was concerned and worried. But when God is ready to open the door for you, you don't need a physical door. I, I, I said, did, did she, did he toast you? He didn't toast me. Did he not toast, you know? You know? Did, did, did you speak to me? Did you take it to me? No, 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 no. He said, we didn't go through all of that. He, he just showed up. Ah, somebody's about to show up for you. They're about to show up for you in a way that you don't expect it. And they are going to, what you don't believe, God is about to make it come to pass. In the name of Jesus, you will look at yourself and people will look at you. They 
and we know that this is the doing of the Lord that is marvelous in our sight. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. Now bow your head with me as you pray. Bow your head with me. Bow your head with me. Marebo shante hiyala mayakade. Just hold on for me. As I close, this is it. The biggest door that can open is not the one that God opens, but the one that God said we should open to him. He said, I stay by the door and I am what? I'm knocking. Today, God is knocking your heart and he's asking you, will you open your heart for me? And so if you don't know him, you cannot partake in this open door. If you have lost the plot and you have backslided, no, you cannot. But today, he wants to do miracle this week, this month. So he's knocking your heart right now. And he said, will you give me your heart? So bow your head and pray to God. Say, God, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Every breath, everything that I have, I give it to you. I'm going to enter into this miracle, into this miracle, into this open door. I give it to you in the name of Jesus. I give it to you in the name of Jesus. Maleba kasoporia balagadaya. Zemaninda tobori kaloshki andia. Imanoga doshe teria maliga doshka. Zebaleka toto miliande he. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray today in the name of Jesus. The word that has gone forth. Let it bring the miraculous in your life in the name of Jesus. For everybody that God is knocking on your heart, may you tender your heart to him in the name of Jesus. Go and do exploit. Go and enter your open door. It's been given to you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Amen. 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 You may be seated for a minute. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Um, we will have the children come forward um, to be prayed for. Um, we will, so what we'll do is that our mommy will, will pray for them, but we'll just anoint them and then she'll make a, a declaration over them. So children, just come forward where Pastor Shala, Pastor Doyin, please come. Um, please get the oil. So you just anoint them. Let, them. let the children come forward. Or which one is? Bring the children. And then mommy will, once we've anointed them, then you, you just make a declaration over them. Hallelujah. So Pastor Shala, please come. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you take Please bring them, bring them, bring them, bring them. Father, thank you. Daddy, thank you. Thank you for the Lord. Declare in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Okay.
teenagers come come this way come this way teenagers come this way just move them move them as they are right children come forward come forward come forward come forward come forward open the floodgates Let's invite our Lordship to please come and make a prayer for them. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. decoration over you Amen. Um, our young children you are blessed Amen. Amen. you are divinely called Amen. you are the seeds of the father Amen. it is important that you know whom you are in Christ Jesus and that you see yourself as a child of God and that Jesus loves you and so I'm going to pray the prayer over you are we all ready Yes, ma'am. Yes, thank you. I declare that you children are blessed. Amen. And, and highly favored of God. Amen. 
You are created in his image. Amen. And you will have a unique purpose. Amen. And destiny. Amen. I declare that children, you shall be protected by the blood of Jesus. Amen. You are safe from harm and danger. Amen. I declare that children, you will have the mind of Christ. Amen. You will be wise and understanding. Amen. And you will make good choices. Amen. I declare that children, you will be strong and courageous. Amen. And you will not be afraid. Amen. But will trust in God's strength and power. Amen. I declare that you children are a light to the world. Amen. You will be a reflection of Christ. Amen. To all those around you. Amen. All these I have prayed, asked, and believe you have received in Amen. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Let's appreciate our mommy. Thank you so much. Okay, children, you can go back. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Excellent children. Amen. You can go now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Um, there's a family who wants to appreciate God. Today is their 10th year anniversary and also 40 years that the Lord has preserved his son. Um, I don't know. Are they here? Are they here? I can't wait. Praise God. If they come out very quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They want to just appreciate God for preserving them for 10 years in marriage and for adding 40 years to the life of his son. Um, we really want to appreciate God for that. I think they are trying to get the families together. Okay, whilst they're doing that, I'll just ask the technical team to put up the announcements. But whilst they are doing that, can I just ask that you um, prepare your offering? Um, today, the Lord has indeed been good to us. Um, offering is one way of opening doors. Um, and so please, um, the ushers are going around with the envelopes. But if you want to give um, online, you can do that. You can take the account details and do that online. We encourage you to do so. Um, but if you need an envelope, the ushers are going around with envelopes if you want to give cash. Okay, technical, when you're ready. Embrace the boundless opportunities that lies ahead. It is time to unlock our dreams, step boldly into uncharted territory and seize the abundance awaiting us. So, let's harness our courage, ignite our passions and embark on a journey where every door is a gateway to greatness. Get ready to walk through with confidence and determination for this month. The world is ours to conquer. A very warm welcome to our esteemed viewers. We are delighted to have you with us today. Still, our month of open doors, and I am Wendy Arumadi. This is ET News.
A very special warm welcome to our esteemed guest minister, Reverend Yumi Adedeji, for joining us today at the RCCG Edinburgh Tabernacle. We are truly honored to have you with us once again. I hope you've been inspired by today's message, which coincides with our miracle service. Thank you for gracing with us, with your presence, and now on the announcements. Last week, Pastor Iyala delivered a poignant message on Sunday titled, There is Hope for the Future, with words of wisdom and compassion. Pastor Iyala illuminated the pathway to optimism and resilience in the face of adversity. For those who have missed out on this enlightening teaching, here is a recap of the message. Jacob understood the blessing. That's why you will see in the life of Jacob when he was returning and he had an encounter where he saw angels ascending and descending. And he just laid a stone, put an altar there. But when he returned and he had an encounter again, the Bible says this time he wrestled with the angel. Because there is future for your hope or there is hope for your future. One thing that you and I must key into to enjoy open doors in this season is the blessing. We will go on a quick commercial break. Please don't go away. We will be right back. The countdown just began to the Singles Gala Extravaganza. Are you ready to spice up your weekend and mingle with the city's most vibrant crowd? Get ready to unleash your inner dance diva and make unforgettable connections at the ultimate event for singles, ticking and marry force alike. Join us on Saturday, April the 27th of 2024 at the RCCG Edinburgh Tabernacle for an evening basting with music and endless opportunities to meet like-minded individuals. Dress to impress in your finest black tie attire and prepare for a night filled with glamour and laughter. Don't wait! Secure your ticket now and get ready to create memories that will last a lifetime. Stay connected and inspired with our transformative teachings. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube to receive the latest updates and inspirational content. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share to help spread the message of faith and transformation. Thank you for joining us for today's news update. Remember to stay dedicated to your goals. Embrace the power of faith. Here is to a fantastic week ahead. On behalf of our executive producers, Pastor and Pastor Mrs. Ayala and the entire production team, we extend our warm wishes for a delightful week ahead. I am Wendy Urumade, reporting live from ET News Edinburgh. Do have a pleasant week. Man, the technical team keep moving the bar. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. One more time, let's appreciate God. Amen. 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 Is the family of Brother Ty we're ready now? Amen. 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 Let's they've they've specially requested this. Um, maybe this is a key to their open door. So please just bear with us as we allow them to do this to thank God for 10 years. 10 years is not is not one day. Um, 10 years, it's a long time for so many marriages. Um, so we want to bless God with them. Okay, um, Brother Taiwo, are you are you ready? Okay, you want you want them to sing you through. <laughs> okay, choir, just quickly, quickly, just give him a song to. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Please come and pray for them. Brother Taiwo is celebrating 40 years and his family is 10 years in marriage. Please, mommy. <laughs> come, Hallelujah. Come up here. Amen. Mommy, come up here. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you once again for what you have done in this family, especially in this house of God. We thank you for all the good things you have been doing in our lives. In this family, we glorify your name. Forty years, ten years, oh, Father, you have been with them. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. And we pray that as they move on, Lord, you will go before them. Everything they will be doing henceforth, you will be with them. Open doors in different ways. Open opportunities. Open favors in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that as you go on this day, the Lord God will go before you. He will always be with you. Before you call, he will be there for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Next year, you will come and do more of this. In the mighty name of Jesus. And for those of us that are looking forward for this year, Father, we pray you will help us to get there. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for this family, for the children, for the head of the family, for the woman in the family. Continue to be with them. Thank you, Father. All this we have asked in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Mommy. Thank you. <laughs> You've been faithful, Lord, from the ages past. That is why your name is forevermore. Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay, we want to welcome those who have joined us today for the very first Sunday. So if this is your very first Sunday, you've worshipped with us in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Edinburgh Tabernacle. Can you please indicate by waving. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Can you please stand? Can you please stand? <laughs> Come on, let's celebrate them. Oh, is this not wonderful? Wonderful. Let them, let's make them feel welcome. <laughs> you are welcome in the name of the Lord. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. We can 
sea all over you, that glory of the Lord. See all over you that glory of the Lord. God bless you. So, this is the Redeemed Christian Church of God. We love the Lord so much that we say He lives here. He may visit other places, but this is His house. That's why it's called Edinburgh Tabernacle. It is the Tabernacle of God. Okay, so you're very much welcome. And I know you've already seen our announcements. So after the service, um, our ministers will meet with you. One of our ministers will meet with you. You will come to the front seat where we're seated there. And, and somebody would have a word with you. So thank you so much for being with us. And we know that you have been truly blessed. And we know that the Lord will indeed show up for you this week in the name of Jesus. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's stand together even as we bring the service to a close. Hallelujah. How many people have been blessed? How many people want Reverend and, and her Lordship to come again? <laughs> so, for those who are not aware, we were supposed to have had a, a, a vision planning meeting this weekend but the devil tried to do his thing but he's lost um, and so we have to bring Reverend back again to have what we would have had um, Amen so Reverend will be with us before the end of today we will agree with him and her lordship and we can get this going, Amen there's a lot to glean from them Hallelujah there's a lot to glean from them. And like he said, he didn't tell you so many things. I mean, these are the people that have the ears to the people at the top um, and have been through doors. And I know that these are things that we can leverage upon as a church, as, as individuals as well. And I really want us to be partakers. So once more, sir and ma, thank you so much. Thank you for so much for always being a blessing and for always, always opening doors <laughs> uh, when we have knocked and thank you so much because we know that you will come again amen 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 let us pray for them first of all father we want to thank you for your son and daughter that you have used to bless us so mightily this weekend father we appreciate you for where you have brought them from for where they are for where you're taking them to father we know that there are so many more territories that you want them to take and we know that by your mercy and by your grace, Father, you will take them through in the name of Jesus. Father, I declare, oh God, all that your son has declared over our life, Lord, it would also be their experience. You will take them through their revolving door experience. You will take them through the doors with the keys. And you will take them through automatic doors in the name of Jesus. Father, them and their children, in the name of Jesus, their ministry will continue to prosper. Father, the purpose for which, Lord, you have placed them for this time in the UK, Lord, you will fulfill and accomplish. Father, continue to use them to raise men and women for your kingdom. And Father, Lord, every time we hear about them, it will be testimonies of your faithfulness. Father, you know their own individual personal needs. Father, please meet them at their personal needs. And Lord, at the time when you, you will come up to make up your jewels, may they be found numbered with the saints. Thank you, Abba, Father. We give you all the praise. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord, out of the abundance that you have blessed us. We have brought just a little to show appreciation. Father, we say that you would accept us and you would accept the offerings. And the purpose that we would use it, you would cause to prosper in your kingdom. Father, rebuke the devourer for our sake. We will not end into a pocket of holes. Father, let our heavens be open. Father, cause men to give unto us good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over in accordance with your word. Supply all our needs according to your riches in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. As we go this week, Lord, let your goodness and mercy follow us. Father, let automatic doors open unto us in the name of Jesus. Father, in areas where we have struggled for years, Father, we tap into that testimony of your son today. And Father, we pray, oh God, we receive new opportunities. We declare that they will be automatic. We declare speed in the name of Jesus. 
Let there be speed of performance in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, as many people that would have a case to answer this week, I declare, Lord, that you will stand as the advocate for them in the name of Jesus. Father, everywhere our case is being tabled, Father, you're our acquitter. We declare, Lord, your children discharged and acquitted in the name of Jesus. Father, that was that's one of the things the open doors. We read of it today that as Paul and Silas were praying and they were released, not only them were freed, others in the prison were set free. My Father and my God, by reason of the open doors we are enjoying today, even the lawful captive, your word says, is set free. And your word says, whosoever you set free is free indeed. I declare you are 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 free indeed in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. We walk into our open doors now in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit. And let the people of God say, Amen. And surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you.